is Seller Network. So that's one of the reasons why uh, Seller Network search hexagon patterns are much more preferred because in, in generality most geographical coverages are not are not in square uh, demarcation. They, 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 they have different shapes, you know. So obviously, uh, coverage-wise or elimination of uh, topographical limitations are bound to be a, a good uh, reason to opt for a cellular. So let's look at some examples of how you solve uh, some of these. Um, uh, design implementation when it comes to the given cells uh, shapes that we have. So let's take the square pattern. Let's go back to the square and then use this on the illustration. And then after that, we go to the hexagon pattern. Okay. So here is a scenario where we have a square geographical area. Um, and it has nine cells demarcations. So obviously we have nine base station units within each of the various square patterns. Okay. And we've been told that the distance uh, of opposite cells, which is uh, from center to center, of base station units happens to be 15 kilometers. And they've also indicated to us that the uh, adjacent cell, in this case, which is square root of two, would be, no, they've not indicated. So the question is, if you were given the distance of B, then A becomes a lot easier to calculate because you, you know that the um, hex the uh, adjacent cell will be the square root of two times the uh, the distance between the opposite cells. So in this case, it would be the square root of two times fifteen, which will give you the uh, the the value or the distance for which you need to place your base station for the adjacent uh, cell. Uh, the view in A you need to find B. It's actually A equals square root of two times uh, times B. And within that scenario, you have B missing, right? B is missing. So if B becomes your uh, a reference uh, point of calculation, then you just have to do divide uh, this side of the equation by square root of two, and then the this side by square root of two to give you what B. So that B has got a lot of B to stand by itself. So it means that to calculate B, you'd have A divided by square root of two. Okay. So in this scenario, you'd have 25.5 kilometers divided by square root of two. That would give you B, the value of B, which is the opposite distance. And C would obviously be the same as A because they are using the same um, uh, vectors in their calculation. And since we use the square pattern, all the sides are, are more or less equal. So whatever A is would also apply to C if you were to try to figure out where to place your um, adjacent cell on this side in reference to this middle cell over here. And with the same value, the same applies to if it was to be on this side or that side. 
and then B uh, that you've already calculated as 25 plus A divided by a square root of 2 would also reference to this side, that, the opposite sides on your left at the top and at the bottom. So they would have the same value as well because we're dealing with a square path with all size or with all size being equal. Okay, so this is our basic math. If you look at it, just basic simple math over here. Now, as a geometry of the um, hexagon, I can get a little bit tricky by the same concept. Once you have the formula, in this case, you have if, once you have the form the the formula in hand, and you're given a scenario. In this case, you have uh, a distance uh, that measures d, which happens to be more or less your uh, adjacent cell distance, happens to be 15 kilometer. And then you were supposed to find the radius. Then you know the formula is what? D usually equals what? D equals what? Or should I say, uh, if you go to the the, uh, the formula for the hexagon calculate to the, to the hexagon uh, shape uh, calculation. It was d equals the square root of 3 times r. So if you want to make r the subject of reference or the point of reference, then you have to divide uh, each side by the square root of 3. So in other words, to find your radius, it would just be 15 kilometer, which is your distance, your adjacent distance divided by the square root of 3. And that would give you the radius of the cell of the hexagon shape that you are you're working with so in that case you can easily know where you're going to be placing all the various uh, uh, adjacent uh, cells within a given geographical coverage okay so in that scenario you have a radius which is in this case, now you have six kilometers as the radius of the cell. And now you need to calculate the, uh, up the adjacent distance. So once again, we already know that uh, D is equal to the square root of three times um, R. And now you've been given R, but you don't know what your D is so obviously you just multiply the R by uh, the square root of what three so be six times the square root of three that would give you the value of uh, your adjacent distance okay so uh, just keep some of these calculations in mind. They're not that, they're not more basic calculations. Um, it, it could get a, a bit trickier when you start incorporating maybe uh, uh, equations of a uh, hexagon shape into it where you, some of the variables are missing and you're supposed to find out the uh, the the area of that particular hexagon cell so you can deduce what the radius is and be able to use that to calculate for your um, adjacent uh, distances uh, but as some uh, as we go to some assignments uh, uh, within the, the course of this topic relate functions and other uh, uh, calculation that might come up with respect to you know some of these uh, ge uh, geometry shapes for cells implementation. Well, since we've gotten a pretty good idea of the various shapes of um, of how cells are uh, uh, implemented, let's look at one key element involved in wireless cellular network implementation. Uh, now earlier on, we, 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 I, I did mention that uh, um, cells are usually assigned 
different frequencies to use to address um, uh, service needs. So, but every cell has has got its own frequencies. Its frequency then it's been allocated to use for its service needs. Uh, but if we were to go far back to um, the earlier part of data communication network, we did mention something about how limited uh, our frequency our frequency spectrum is on 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 on, on this planet, I should say, or in this universe. Uh, yeah, our spectrums are quite limited, so we we have to try and find ways to make sure we maximize the the little we get or the little we allocate for a given transmission need so within cellular networks since it happens to be more or less a wireless network implementation frequency uh, spectrum or frequency allocations are quite essential which means that we have to find ways to make the most out of the frequency bands that we have for, for our cell network transmission. Okay. Now, one way that engineers have uh, come to a consensus in making sure that we can, we can we can actually use the frequency very very efficiently is adapting what you call a reuse or a frequency reuse approach or method. And usually, the objective of uh, frequency reuse is to use the same frequency in other nearby cells that would allow for frequencies to be used for multiple simultaneous uh, conversation or transmission uh, within a given cellular network implementation. So at least if we're to allocate a frequency for this guy and a frequency for this guy, and uh, we feel the need to use some of these guys' frequency, we have to figure a way to come up with a good approach so we can maximize the minimum frequency banner we have at our disposal. But which reminds me, uh, before an ISP actually goes into or ventures out into cellular network transmission or service provision, they always have to subscribe for frequency band that they're going to operate within. And usually frequency band, like I said, as I mentioned early on, they're quite limited. So it's been very, very uh, uh, geographically being well distributed out, not evenly, but at least every region has got its own division of frequency spectrum. That it can be used for transmission or, or in this case, cellular, cellular wireless service needs. Okay, and there are various authorities within various regions or countries uh, that are in charge of how frequencies are, are managed and allocated or even uh, provided to service providers. Some of the limitations uh, uh, ranges from cellular networks had to uh, be managed to uh, provide allocate or to provide or allocate frequency spectrums to uh, address improvement needs when it comes to efficiency. Uh, the other one would probably be the uh, power based transceivers are control, which is uh, minimize how much power output or power dependence some of the devices or some of your transmitters, your receivers, your control units that actually are consumed. Okay? So power-based transceivers are well controlled, uh, which allows for communication within cells on given frequencies. It also limits uh, escaping power to adjacent cells and allows for reuse of frequencies in nearby cells. We also have the use of same frequency for multiple conversations, which in this case would be 10 to 15, 
frequency per cell to address some of those uh, multiple compensation needs. So when it comes to frequency re frequency reuse, there has to be an a, a approach because if you really want to find out ways to uh, manage the frequencies that we have or that's been allocated to you, you also have to find a way to uh, define its uh, calculation or its uh, implementation. And within that, we have variables indicated where we have n cells uh, using the same number of uh, frequency as so assuming you had n uh, cells the number of cells within a given geographical location happens to be n and they use the same number of frequency then k total number of frequency used will be will be we identify within a system and within that uh calculating each cell's uh, uh frequency allocation for most of our advanced mobile phone services would then be the k which is the total number of frequency used uh divided by the number of cells used within the same uh, or that using the same number of frequency bands the total frequency in the cell system is 365 what is the average frequency per cell obviously we're using this scenario this design for the for the question here then i told you the total frequency in the cell system and this could be an entire cell system so you want to figure out how many frequencies been allocated to each one of them So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Obviously, seven cells. Okay, seven cells, and they have a total frequency of 395. So to get the average frequency per cell, it's just going to be this divided by seven, and then you have the frequency. The cell transmission needs. Frequency reuse are commonly characterized using the following parameters. We have D, which happens to be the minimum distance between centers of cell that use the same band of frequency. Yeah, and D is the minimum distance. Uh, R happens to be the radius of the cell little d will be the distance between centers of adjacent cells which is usually the square root of three times frequency radius and then we also do have the number of cells in repetitive fashion, uh, patterns so when it comes to the n, number of cells in repetition patterns uh, I've got a reuse factor and each cell in pattern uses a unique band of frequency. And that's where we looked at some of the functions that can be uh, incorporated into, uh, into giving us the right values needed to actually put together uh, a frequency reuse uh, factor. So in this in this case, we have uh, a cell it has a cell pattern with the following sets of values. You have n equals i squared plus j squared plus one in one times j in parentheses. If you were to solve that equation out, you would notice that uh, the values in this case you have the values of the various value we have i j having these values so if we were to plug some of these values into this equation you will notice that you have various number of reuse factors that you can be used that you can use to address uh, transmission needs so that means that the following 
relationship holds that D divided by R equals the square root of 3 times N. And this can also be expressed as big D divided by little d actually equals square root of N. Okay, so here is a diagram that shows the reuse pattern, the frequency reuse pattern. In this case, you have a, a number of cluster of cells, cluster of uh, hexagon cells, or this this would just in other words would be a cell system, a number of cell system, and some of them have been grouped together in fours. The fours representing the more or less the reuse pattern of n or for n values. So within this structure over here where you have segmentations of four units, the four represents the four uh, uh, number of uh, cells within a given segment is what you term the uh, the reuse pattern over here. So which would be your n. In this case it's four. Because if you notice the pattern, if you look at the segmentations, this segment over here has got four number of cells. One, two, three, four. This one as well, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So in this case, one, two, three, four. So in this so, so within this cell system over here, you can say that the reuse factor or pattern over here for N is four. Now on, on this other hand over here, if you go through, you notice the segmentation actually have seven cells within a segment. So that would mean that the reuse factor or the frequency reuse pattern factor over here will be seven for that particular um, cell. So there are so many ways. This is just all this, this in all this, we are just trying to figure a way to maximize uh, frequency limitation that we have. Okay. So this all based on engineers and how they uh, plan on managing a cell system for a given geographic car coverage that they have so they can get the most out of the limited frequency that they, they've, been, they've been allocated or they've uh, they subscribed for. Okay, so it's up to them to decide do we need to um, uh, have a, a cluster of seven for a reuse pattern or a cluster of uh, four for a reuse for a pattern or it, it all depends. It all depends on how the uh, the geographical the, the the geographical locations needs uh, uh, dictates. Uh, if there's high traffic and uh, or low traffic, uh, then that could determine whether it's going to be a high number of uh, frequency reuse or not. Okay. And then in the, in this one we have nineteen, which is quite a uh, huge. Great, so that's how frequency reuse patterns are, are well, can be another option of addressing uh, limitations of frequencies spectrums that we have. Um, another approach when it comes to capacity needs um, is by either adding new cells, so when we want to say increase uh, capacity needs for a given cell network. We can either add new cells where we create new regional systems uh, that are much more scalable, so they can uh, uh, they can have access to a lot more cells, so a lot more channels to address transmission need. Uh, other 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 other, uh, other capacity increasing need is to uh, borrow frequencies, and um, that is to take. Um, frequency from adjacent cells when they are least congested or congested or whatever, and then reassign it to uh, other, other, other locations or other cells uh, that needs it uh, urgently or most. Uh, and this all done usually in a dynamic fashion. It's all configured on the system to handle that. And I want to give you a typical example. For instance, you take a, a metropolis, which is highly populated, saturated, uh, for business activities, and then uh, for uh, within a given period of time, but at certain period of time, it's less congested, less populated because people are probably moved to either suburbs or various places of their uh, dwellings, 
So in that case, when that happens, it's a good way for uh, to borrow frequencies back and forth within those uh, metropolis and and then uh, suburbs. Uh, I, I, I usually want to use um, let's say uh, typical location would probably be uh, your 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 main uh, downtown areas. If you have a downtown area where it's always bustling with activities from a given time period, maybe from um, seven to maybe five, seven a.m. to five p.m. It's bustling with activities, and right after five p.m., everybody kind of like moves out, moves back to wherever their uh, dwellings are. So in that case, when that happens, there is going to be less uh, uh, frequency requirement within that downtown area because business activities have come to an end close and people have relocated more or less to their dwelling places where they're going to be needing those frequency. So when in a situation like that, then you can borrow the frequency from the uh, from the downtown area and then reallocate it to, dynamically, reallocate it to their dwelling place where they need it most because that's where they are now. So that's another way to basically address your uh, uh, capacity needs and our approach is to either uh, split cells uh, into smaller beds you know where they are non-uniform uh, distribution of topography uh, to address traffic needs making smaller cells in higher uh, in high use areas uh, usually in that sense when you're splitting cells uh, or original cells uh, for maybe six to six point five to thirteen kilometers can be uh, resized to maybe 1.3, 1.5 kilometer limits in general, and they're much more frequent and and and, and addresses hands off a lot more easily, uh, and you also have a lot more base stations involved within that uh, implementation. So keep in mind when you want to go for the cell splitting option of uh, capacity increment within cell network, you have to think about you know uh, uh, using systems that use up uh, that take that can they can they can take up shorter distance range in terms of coverage, and and, and have more frequent hands off, and as well as think about you know implementing a lot more base station, much more uh, basic. So it involves you know a number of calculations, uh, depending on how you um, want to base your cell splitting uh, within a given um, area. So a number of eight factors that you need to look at, look, look to, you need to look into to address that uh, uh, cell splitting needs or capacity increment needs. So that's a diagram of um, how a cell uh, splitting would, would actually go, where you'd have, so you do have, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cell unit within geographic area. And then, for some reason, you notice that uh, there's a huge cluster of uh, traffic demands within a given spot of a cell unit, and you wanna you realize that frequency uh, uh, needs are not being met. So you decide, and with with the huge traffic demands coming through, so you decide to basically split the cell or the cells within that given uh, uh, geographical location, you just have to split them into smaller, smaller uh, sessions, or split into smaller bits or smaller uh, cells. So in this case, you have a bigger cell that has been split to a smaller cell, and then a smaller cell for three main key uh, adjacent cells or cells that are in, in, in within a given location. And more, like I said, this is usually addressed. You have scenarios like this when you have maybe a lot more cluster happening with this within this particular location of that uh, given cell geography or uh, location or area. And this could be probably uh, if you, this usually happens sometimes when you have a new um, uh, new location for residents coming up. And uh, there are a lot more people trying to patronize the place, and the existing infra existing cell design uh, seems to be uh, more or less uh, limited 
in addressing the entire the, the current demand or the current trend of people living within a particular spot 